Over the years, many discoveries have been brought up, showing just how certain cultures used religion in ways that would make you do a double take and realize that something might be off here. For instance, it is a widely debated fact that several Western cultures actively used Christianity to enslave Africans. And while the facts about these are still incredibly murky, there is one notable figure in the history of African Christianity who definitely needs some recognition. This is the story of King Caleb, the Ethiopian king who was sainted by the Catholics and used to convert Africans to Christianity. As the history of Christianity goes, one of the major themes that tends to stand out is that of expansion. And this is where we have King Caleb of Axum. Known to some as St. Elisbon, Caleb was the king of Axum, one of the most influential empires in Africa, which currently stands in modern-day Ethiopia. Caleb of Axum was known during his reign as Ella Atzbia. However, after the Hellenization of his name and figure, he was named St. Elisbon. Caleb was one of the two most famous kings of Axum, together with King Azana. Interestingly enough, it was during the reign of King Azana in the 4th century AD that Axum, or Ethiopia, was converted to Christianity. No one really knows when Caleb was born. At the same time, there's little knowledge about when exactly his kingdom started and ended. All we have to go by are the huge amounts of coins that have his face and name. According to some experts, the inscriptions on the coins suggest that Caleb's reign lasted around two decades in the first half of the 6th century. As you would imagine, very little is known about Caleb's early life as well, if anything at all. We know that his father's name was Tazna and that he was a relatively successful king. But even Caleb's father was a bit of an enigma. We know that his reign lasted approximately seven years, but most of his life story is also lost to history. However, it is said that a young Caleb was sent by his father to learn at a Christian monastery. It's suspected that this monistic education was primarily what caused him to become incredibly religious. Now, when it comes to monarchs enforcing the rules that they espouse, there's a bit of a murky relationship here. It's pretty common to see a lot of kings saying one thing and doing something completely different. You could have a king who tells everyone not to drink alcohol despite being a raging alcoholic in his private life. And, in the case of Christianity, we saw several monarchs who espoused the rules of the religion only to flout these same rules in one way or the other. Caleb, however, was not such a king. His education instilled a disciplined love for Christianity in him, and the monarch maintained this love throughout his life and his rule. All through his reign, Caleb operated by the rules of Christianity, both in his private and public life. In fact, things got so intense that, in his younger years, Caleb didn't want to be king. He instead became so steeped in his religious life that he very much preferred to live as a monk. Everything Caleb did or had an interest in revolved around expanding the reach of the Word of God and helping to take Christianity to new shores. So as you can imagine, he immediately grabbed the opportunity to help spread Christianity when the opportunity came along. You might think that the life of a monk isn't necessarily something that will appeal to you in modern times, but back in the day, a monk's life was the perfect one for the young version of Caleb. He focused on expanding his knowledge while also exploring literature and engaging in debates about religion and its impact on modern life. Essentially, monasteries were the universities of their era, and the young Caleb had an insatiable thirst for knowledge that followed him throughout his days. Still, there's a common saying that we don't choose our fate, and when it came to Caleb, there was no hiding from him. With the passing of Tazna, Caleb, a little boy who had barely grown to adulthood, was forced to step up and become the leader of his people while still being forced to mourn his father. At the same time, the fact that he was now chosen to lead his people meant that Caleb was forced to put his dream of being a monk on hold. Devastated, Caleb was soon named the new king of Axum and saddled with all the responsibilities that his new position carried. Interestingly, Caleb's ascension also came at an opportune time. Axum had been in a lengthy dispute with their neighbor, Himyar. For those who might not know, Himyar is a region in Yemen that appears to have converted to Judaism at the end of the 4th century, several decades after the conversion of the Ethiopian kingdom of Axum to Christianity. Later, these people apparently developed a deep relationship with the Persian Empire. The people of Himyar had expanded their influence to Nashron, a region in southwestern Saudi Arabia that was close to the country's border with Yemen. In their campaign, the armies of Himyar conducted some terrible atrocities, including killing Christians in droves. 
All of this would have been enough to alarm any king, much less one with a strong religious belief system like Caleb. To be fair, this would not be Aksum's first war with Himyar. The two empires had been fierce rivals for decades, but they mostly clashed over social and economic concerns. This was the first time that religious persecution would have been a major issue between them, and it just so happened that it occurred at a time when Aksum had a deeply religious king. Now, while Caleb himself was motivated to go into battle with the people of Himyar, he had the issue of being able to convince his people to join this crusade. Primarily, he knew that it would be a bit of a Herculean task to convince the merchants and prominent people of his kingdom to join in. Caleb knew that he needed a massive navy to move his soldiers because Himyar and Nashron were separated from Ethiopia by the Red Sea. And if he wanted to be the one to strike first, he'd need to move quickly and decisively. Thus, he needed the support of the merchants. Luckily, though, the merchants of Axum needed little to no convincing. They realized that Himyar was Axum's major competitor on the international trade front, and if they could conquer the empire, they'd pretty much become the monopolists on this front. With his merchants behind him, Caleb soon found himself commanding the largest naval fleet in the Indian Ocean. Besides this, he also got a significant amount of support from the Roman Empire. At this time, Justin I, the Roman Emperor, had caught wind of the atrocities that had been committed in Najran, and he was more than willing to do something about it. Justin I, who was also a strong Christian, was more than happy to lend a helping hand to Caleb. This way, he could aid an ally in the war and also hopefully cripple an ally of the Persian Empire. So he asked Caleb to send troops to punish what happened in Najran, and he also lent a helping hand by sending reinforcements and resources. Quickly enough, Justin I pledged a Roman fleet to help transport Caleb's soldiers to Himyar. With this combined force, Caleb and the Aksumite forces landed in Arabia and immediately wreaked havoc. To make matters worse, the remaining Christians in Himyar joined the war effort, further bolstering Caleb's numbers and giving him an additional advantage. The Aksumite advance was briefly held back at the city of Zafar, and they were forced to wait until the next day to line up for battle. Here, the strategy for Himyar was a simple one their infantry would engage the Aksumite front line, and then a cavalry would also be sent to outflank the army's sides. However, Abraha, one of the Aksumite commanders, had seen this coming, and as Himyar's cavalry dashed around the battlefield's edges, he ordered a counterattack from his war elephants. This strategy worked like a charm, and Abraha was able to finally break through Himyar's ranks and outflank them instead. With the Battle of Zafar completely lost, there was nothing left for the Himyarite army. In the year 525 AD, Himyar's leader drove his horse into the Red Sea, choosing to drown instead of being alive to witness his empire fall. And as he breathed his last, so did the kingdom of Himyar. A new Christian king named Somiyafa Ashwa was placed on the throne. He paid frequent tributes to Caleb, while also permitting a massive Aksumite garrison on his land. Essentially, he was no more than a colonial governor of his own land, with Caleb really being the person with all the power. Caleb's conquest of Yemen is cited by many as the peak of Aksumite power. He assembled Aksum's largest army, and because of that, he was able to crush Aksum's most fierce rival. At the same time, we should also mention the fact that Caleb's occupation of Himyar marked a significant turning point for Christianity. It meant that Christianity became the predominant religion in the region, and it also meant that a lot of people, even though they might not have wanted it, pretty much had to convert to Christianity. When the war in Yemen was over, Caleb returned to Ethiopia, where he left the throne, sent his crown to be hung in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem, and went back to the monastery of Abba Pentalawan, where he lived as a monk until his death. Still, he didn't need to remain a king to be venerated. For the war effort and his defense of Christianity, Caleb was declared a saint by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the Jesuits that visited the country had taken his worship to Europe and the Americas, where he now became known as Saint Elisbon. Together with Saint Ephugenia, also Ethiopian, they were two of the black saints used by Catholic evangelizers to convert enslaved people brought from Africa to work on the plantations of the American continent and the Caribbean. As for his successor, well, history doesn't tell as well. Experts believe that one of his sons, Israel and Jibre Meskel, must have taken the Ethiopian throne after him, but it's not totally clear. In every sense of the word, Caleb's rule was the golden age for Axum. He flourished both on the domestic and international scene, 
and his reign would end up being a consequential part of the region's history.